Good evening. How's it going out there, everyone? Hope everyone's uh, having a wonderful Saturday night out here. It is 10, 10 p.m. California time, July 19th, 2025. Latest activity on the globe here shows a 1.6 there across Southern California in the green flag. Quite a bit of movement here, uh, roughly all the way from the Middle America Trench northward into the Gulf there of California. Got uh, some earthquake activity kind of working its way up here into Southern California today. I don't think we got anything above 2.5. Well, it looks like we do have one 2.7 over here around uh, the west side of the San Joaquin Valley. A little interesting activity there today for a 2.7. That was just earlier this evening. Uh, a couple more earthquakes there along the San Jacinto Vault Zone and a couple earthquakes across the Bakersfield area. Uh, no major swarming going on here. Just uh, looks like a typical day down here across Southern California for now. Uh, Northern California got one i got this one earthquake here uh, underneath the Sacramento River. For some reason, this area of the valley gets uh, gets some periodic earthquake activity. I don't, you know, it's a ways down there, though, 16 miles deep. So I don't think that has anything to do with the Sacramento River. It's more than likely um, still a sign of pressure out here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Sometimes it'll kind of... Uh, warp this area when you get the pressurization going on here and there's been a, a handful of earthquakes out here today quite a few twos uh the latest here are 2.9 some of these earthquakes uh fairly deep here uh, 15 miles underneath this area of eureka that's associated with the cascadia subduction zone also uh, another 2.4 early this morning roughly within that same zone now tremor activity is uh, quite amplified here with 510 epicenters of tremor being recorded just today alone. So in the last week here, it's been uh, it's been elevated. Got to almost 2,000 epicenters of tremor, mainly across this area of Oregon underneath this region. But we are uh, just recently getting some activity there across northern California here at the extreme southern end. So we're seeing the effects of the earthquake activity upstream. No big earthquake activity offshore yet, but obviously it's building up some strain there. Uh, it's interesting though, because we just had a decent trimmer event here back in May. And um, let's see how many we had. Yeah, we had well, 11,000 something. Let's see if I can get the total number here again. Uh, 11,839 that was from uh, roughly May 1st to early part of June and that's a decent amount of trimmer I would say uh, so normally when we see this amount of trimmer happening uh, it's it, it takes a couple months break or so even a few months break uh, but right now looks like we're starting to go back up again as I showed you guys here on the daily chart it's um, getting up there 510 epicenters of trimmer so it'll be interesting to watch see uh, what takes place here because normally like I say after every for the most part every elevated event up here will have a period of quietness or at least minimal trimmer but uh, we're right back up there again so we'll just continue to watch that there's definitely uh, some earthquake activity there across the southern end nothing going on there across Oregon offshore though out here in the Pacific we had a number of earthquakes uh, 3.1 today and also a more recent 11 uh, I'm at 3.4 at 11 o'clock this morning so things are moving out here and adjusting. Uh, also, we're getting that uh, Juan de Fuca plate being shoved underneath this area of the North American plate further with those tremor counts being elevated like that. Mount Rainier, uh, 10 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. Let's go double check the uh, volcano map here, see what we got. Yeah, it looks like uh, I don't see anything here in the last two hours. Check out the seismograph station here. There's still still uh, definitely some earthquake activity out there. Very small ones. Um, little break, though, it looks like earlier uh, this morning. So, But uh, still continue to see earthquake activity. It's dying down. I mean, if you look up here on the um, map, they got this 720 today's, well, technically not 720 yet here, but you get it. It's the recent data here. Here's when the swarm started back on the 8th, talking about, you know, a lot of earthquake activity all at once. And we're mellowing out, but I'm still watching that. There was a couple deeper earthquakes there to begin with, uh, roughly somewhere where the magma chamber would be, way down there, five, six miles or so underneath that region. What? What? <laughs> 
When did this pop up? 940. Yeah, that was at uh, 2142. So just here, fairly recent. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. One earthquake up in Canada. That's just an overall, uh, you know, sign of pressure adjustment and movement out here across the interaction of the Cascadia. This whole area is starting to show, you know, a bunch of movement. So just be on guard up here across the Alaska area. Decent 4.7 aftershock here, 26 miles deep. A little bit deeper than some of these other quakes here. Uh, that brings up the total tally of uh, earthquake activity to 234, 231 earthquakes. Woo, that's a lot of movement. Of course, we had that 7.3. The largest aftershock still is a 5.6. That happened uh, a few hours after the main quake. Quite a few fours and threes. Should be some twos in here as well, right? Well, there's, it looks like they added a bunch more threes. Uh, twos, everything up to about, well, I'm surprised they reported 2.0. A couple ones in there as well, but I'm sure there's a lot more ones in the what's showing up there either way still earthquake activity ramping up also some newer movement here outside of anchorage here to the southeast early this afternoon here 4.1 just watching this area out here across this region the subduction zone that uh maybe maybe next here i don't know we'll definitely watch that though this section did rupture back in the uh was it 19 uh when was that big one 9.2 is that 64 Anyway, that's a pretty big rupture out here for that earthquake. I don't know if we got enough strain built up out there. Uh, let's see here. Across Japan, a couple earthquakes up here, 4.5. Let's go see what we got here for the uh, Japan website. Oh, it froze. Hold on a second here. There we go. Uh, the latest, a 3.6. Prior to that, man, a little spotty. Look at that huge jump in between this last earthquake and the 10 o'clock this morning's time frame. So a lot less activity there happening for now, but as always, got to watch that. It's not, you know, it's consistently always under pressure out here, but when we see an increase in pressure, that's when we see uh, the further earthquake activity ramping up here. One super deep quake underneath the Sea of Oz there. That's a super deep one, 4.1. Not showing up here on the USGS map. Pretty good cluster across the typical crunch zone here. Nothing new changing. New Zealand just sitting down there uh, with a couple threes across the board. Nothing big, still quiet out here across this region. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh yeah, we kind of forgot to check uh, the rest of the states out here I mean really nothing new happening out across Texas just the oil field still rocking and rolling Yellowstone nothing showing up here on the map I still haven't got uh, any access to the data I don't know why at least here on the computer one new earthquake here into the middle America trench following this swarm of activity here earlier actually it looks like it's bouncing back and forth between here and there which makes sense right when you get the divergent zone activity out here this is a um, uh, looks like it's on a strike slip boundary but that should add further strain out here across this region the middle american trench that's pretty much where the uh, general plate stress movement is it's this little plate right here the middle american trench runs about 88 88 mm per year uh, in accumulated slip rate so when activity happens right here Across the Cocos Plate and the Pacific Plate, that strain normally transfers right over there to the Middle America Trench, and that's why we're seeing that bouncing back and forth activity today. So continue to watch that. Puerto Rico Trench, not a whole lot happening there for now. Let's see if we got anything else going on here. I'm just going to try and keep this super short, folks, because I'm tired. I've not been able to sleep lately. Uh, Chile area, 4.5. Aside from that, it's newer movement out in the Atlantic for once, a 4.5. Iceland's still seeing some activity up there. Uh, I believe that was in Iran, 5.2 earthquake, a decent sized earthquake up here. Um, no, excuse me, back over here, northern Iran. 
I struck this afternoon here, but uh, it's around this these mountain ranges out here. There's always deeper activity um, happening out here. This is pretty shallow, though, off of the plate boundary, but it's in a zone uh, that uh, sees a lot of earthquake activity. Here's the historical data run, as you can see. Uh, Iran in the Middle East here is just a lot of earthquake activity happens here. All right, uh, let's see. Anything else going on here, folks, on the on the globe? I don't really see anything of any major interest here, so let's check out space weather activity. And then we'll get off here and just probably hopefully call it a night here. I'm just super tired for some reason. 66. A uh, little, little coronal hole. Not that big of one, but... Um, We'll see what happens here with uh, space weather activity. I see a couple channels out here stating that uh, we're going to see elevated earthquake activity from this little bitty coronal hole. Uh, we'll see what happens here. It's directly facing us. Uh, but far as any uh, major space weather activity goes, I don't see it. Uh, there's a little bit of sea flare activity coming in, C1.2. Uh, and man, we have a, a number of sunspots out here. Let's take a look and see what we have for magnetic complexity. This one's just dying out. Uh, this area is just about out of sight, out of mind. Back into uh, into sunspots that are really not capable of producing anything big. Uh, this area up here may be possible. See an M flare. Uh, it's somewhat complex there. This is one of the sunspots. It almost looks identical to the last time it was out here. Uh, these are the same sunspots that go around and around and they come back around again after a number of weeks and they just get newly renamed. Uh, you know, a different name for that uh, sunspot number. Uh, no major roars there in the forecast. We'll keep an eye up there on that sunspot, uh, which is uh, it's not named yet, but you guys got it. It's over there across the northeastern uh, limb of the sun. Trying to think what else there is. I think that's about it. Uh, severe weather-wise, got uh, a little bit of noise happening out there across the plains, northern plains in the Montana area, it looks like. Let's see what we got here on the weather radar. Oh, yeah, a bunch of lightning and thunder out there. I love me a good thunderstorm. I just wish we had some of that out here more often in California. Uh, it just, it doesn't, I mean, every once in a while in the springtime, it'll come in, but... Uh, aside from that, uh, I'm trying to think. Anything going on with the hurricanes? Little tropical system out there in the eastern Pacific has a little bit low development there of uh, developing. Really not expecting much, though. The Atlantic Ocean, nothing showing up. Central Pacific, nothing. Clear as a bell for now. Let's go check Hawaii, right? Got to check that. Did, did I didn't see any updates here from the USGS uh far as any eruption yet this is from last night we got to be getting close i'm thinking here look how far ab above we are in the previous level way up here i'm thinking this might be more of a spectacular eruption with the south with the south vent being blocked um i don't know if it's going to blow that out or not but uh it, it might be interesting to watch here. Let's see what we got here for the webcams up at the summit area. <clears throat> oh yeah, we got the glow going on. It's getting close. So we'll see if both of those fire up. Last time during the uh, last eruption here was only the north vent that was spewing out the uh, lava fountains. So the south vent is blocked. We'll watch and see what happens with that. Getting close though. I think Probably by, you know, in the morning. Uh, it, it could be done and over with. You know, already happened and the, the eruptions don't last that long. So, anyway, have yourself a wonderful evening there, folks. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday night. I know these uh, seismograph stations here, some of them are going offline. Um, why, I don't know, but uh, they should come back. So, if not, I'll do a reset on them tomorrow. But, uh, anyway... Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here tomorrow for the uh, Sunday morning update. Take care, everyone.